being sus, brains up. Does he know I notice? Does he want some? Call my homie being sus, don't get caught. Tell us, girl, we're just chilling while I taste him. Call my homie. Hello, Hello gorgeous, dazzling divas, and welcome, welcome to, to another episode of So Rude. Rude. I'm here with the one and only Sab Argo. Sab Argo, it's my name, and I just got a root canal. She don't do it for the fame, she do it for the gains. And I'm here with Diongo Yorkie. Ooh, that's Dion Yorkie on of the Dion. Oh, music platforms. What a week hit. Peppa has been. Pig. Uh, uh Monica DeVici? <laughs> I'm Monica and you're Peppa Pig. Oh She's my God, dead. we should dress up as her. Uh, I can't believe we haven't yet. I know, right? But the opportunity has sort of come and gone. Yeah. No, we so. can still do it. I don't know. I'm we'll manifesting. Have a White Lotus episode. There'll be a, a new character in White Lotus 3 that we can dress up as. True. We shall see. Oh, how are you doing, Diongo? I'm doing good. It's been a week and a half. It really has been quite... The week has gone by slowly because so much has happened. It feels like it's been like a month since we last did the pod. Yeah. But damn, we have lots to talk about. Yeah. Where do we even begin? Uh, so I got a root canal yesterday. Q, and they killed that nerve, Ow. baby. They I, they stunted on that nerve. Yeah, I didn't know what a root canal was until they told me that I needed to get a root canal. You never had one before? That's no, good. Have you? No. I don't believe. Actually, no, I don't think so. No, I don't think so. But apparently I have two cavities. A little too much information. My not, cavity. You know, my cavity. Not the most glamorous conversation, but I'm getting them filled tomorrow. So that's Yeah, we all. went to the dentist yesterday and then they said that I had a really bad bad cavity and then a small one and then Dion has two small ones. Uh-huh. So they were like, We can get you a root canal today and I was like, Okay, so I didn't really have time to mentally prepare. And they put a balloon in your mouth? Yeah, they put, like, because they have, I'm kind of like, scared. They put, like, a balloon, like, a broken balloon. Okay. Just, like, a, you know, like, those... Like a condam. Yeah, you know those sheets of paper that they give you? Oh, like a dental dam. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. So they put that and they make a little hole oh, just for the tooth. Interesting. Is I that think. So, so whatever they're doing doesn't get all over your mouth? Yeah. Oh, they should have done it to me yesterday because I was swallowing all kinds of shit. Yeah, I hate that. During the cleaning, they Ugh. did they did the mold for me because my bottom retainer fell off during the pandemic. Ugh. But in Canada, when I got my retainers done, the mold was a yummy flavor and they got they let you pick. So I picked like bubblegum mint. Oh. But this one tasted like just the chemicals. Mine tasted good. Ooh. Oh, they did it to you too? Yeah. The mold? Yeah. For what? For my <gasps> crown. Oh, because she's, she's getting back braces. No, because I had to get a crown on the tooth that I had uh, oh, my okay. root canal in the back. Would you get the back braces? Yeah, I want to get the back braces. That's so cool. I, I didn't know you could do that. Bottom ones, because they're kind of crooked. A little, but like still gorge. Yeah. Gorge and natural, but like I didn't know that you could do a back brace. Like that's wild. I know. Because like I would do Invisalign, but I don't have the patience. To like take it off and on, brush your teeth. It's also painful. Like, like seventy like times a day. Use this thing to chew and push it down, and it hurts. Yeah, and the thing is, because I can put a big ass dick in my mouth and not puke. Okay. But if I have <laughs> anything that's plastic in my mouth, like, ugh, it doesn't even have to be like like inside of my mouth. Like, it can be just plastic near my mouth, and I want to gag. And you basically had a big dick in your mouth that was not mine. When on the dance floor. Ah! <laughs> oh my god well it wasn't technically in my mouth but no but real close yeah we went to this club <laughs> in mexico so my favorite club in mexico is called kinky but now it's been dethroned dethroned yes by which is a good name i guess blow. it's called blow <laughs> this club blow. it's iconic like the first we, were, we saw it online that they had multiple floors and at first they didn't have the top floor open so we were like oh, what the hell there's only one floor then the top floor opened yeah there was a the third balcony floor because we they get there so really like, did surf we have talked before about how we like oh that's your tea by the way thank you it's red tea it's not green oh thank you uh we have talked before about how we like cheap thrills we like cheap <laughs> clubs we like we're cheap on the alcohol yeah like we went to when we, t- we talked about the four seasons story right Last. yeah so when we went to the four seasons which you'll 
It was a hot story with Glenn Powell in the last podcast. Go check it out. Give us five stars on all podcast places. We kind of just like realized that expensive drinks don't taste as good. Yeah, no. And it's just not it. Because like if you go to an expensive place, you feel like everyone's snobby. Yeah, you no one's like there to have a good time. Everyone's judging everyone. No one's there. Like if you're like, oh, I want to dance, but like nobody's dancing. Like cool people don't dance here. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I don't know, like expensive places just don't live up to the hype. Yeah, and like that's a message to like the pretentious gays out there. Touch grass and be nice to one another. Because yeah. Because the gays at this club, everyone was smiling. Everyone was it, having it, a good time. Yeah, I didn't feel clicky. People were talking to whoever they wanted. Yeah, you and I was like, this like, is fresh. Oh, hey, how you doing? And they're like, oh, hey. Like everyone was just so nice because we talked to so many people. Because sometimes you go to gay bars in Toronto and it kind of feels like the gays are like, don't come near me. Yeah. And everyone's side eyeing each other and you're like, but why? Yeah, it's like, girl. Yeah. We all like, eat ass. Yeah, like we're not hot <laughs> shit. <laughs> we kidding, all eat I don't eat ass. <laughs> I get eaten. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> no, but so we get there. So it's like, I don't do that. <laughs> I'm a pretentious guy. <laughs> <laughs> no, we get there and the cover was like, really cheap too it was like what was it it was pennies it was like 14 dollars wild which is like Kochek was like a dollar that was insane yeah Kochek was like a dollar so that's like 15 dollars so far and i could get a water bottle for like four bucks yeah which any other club in toronto you want water it's 12 dollars. so then we go up and were they out already? Yeah. So yeah, we they, were, uh, they were They were. on the first floor. And we kind of like, there was three strippers. And we kind of found our one. We were like, yeah. he's the one we're into tonight. Because we like just got there. We're like, wait, there's strippers. And like, <laughs> ah. And I had never seen a male stripper before, I don't think. Right. Well, they were go-go dancers. They didn't go fully nude. Oh, yeah, yeah. Go-go dancers. Well, I have seen a go-go dancer that one time in LA. But he wasn't hot. But he didn't. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he wasn't hot, but he was shoving our face in his, on his thing. But this one was like it wasn't different. fully nude, but I was totally okay with the fact that the underwear on the back end was see through. Yeah, so I could see more than. And enough. they had like good dance moves. Yeah, and I'm all for supporting the economy, especially when it's like because I feel like in Mexico, you have bills for twenty <laughs> pesos, which is kind of like. I think it's like a dollar or so. Yeah, it's like two dollars. Which almost in Canada, the, the the least amount of bills that you can have is five dollars. Which and ruins like, everything. Do I want to tip five dollars right now? No. Where you can tip five times one dollar and make it more of an experience. You know, it, it feels like such an experience because you yeah. just feel like, like because you can give them four. You can give them like 10, 20 pesos and you feel like you're rich. Yeah. It's great. And they make you feel like you're the only girl in the world. Really. Exactly. They're good at their job. But in Canada, it's like, I'm not going to whip a toonie at you. Yeah. Like, I can't. That's dangerous. <laughs> Are you going to throw a coin at them? And this is great because the bills make the crotch look even bigger. Yeah. Whereas the toonies would just probably weigh the underwear down and make them fall off, which, yeah. you know, it's kind of could win. Could win. Uh, so we found our manses, and he had like a cute little smile. He had nice abs, nice pecs. He was great. He kept running away on us, though. Yeah. So well, we were like, chasing him around the bar. Like, not running <laughs> away, like, because they had like two stages one in the first floor and one in the second floor. So they would do like, I like that they did like 10 minute shows mm-hmm. on each floor, because then it keeps you moving from up and down, fresh. up and down. Yes, we're and like, okay, now we have to go upstairs. <laughs> now we have to go down. And in between, they let you on the stage yeah. to dance, which was so freaking cool. It was very immersive. Yeah. It felt like you were watching the stripper, and then you became the stripper. And then also, we got shots. Like, we got like, because I got the first round of shots. How much? Tequila shots. And Cheap. it was probably like $15 for four shots. Okay, not Which bad. Which is not bad at all. That's amazing. <laughs> like that, it, four, four shots in Canada, you're easily spending like $50. Yeah, like 60 Crazy. That was crazy. And then I, I was even like tipping the bartenders because I was like, this is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> but the bartenders were so like iconically sassy about it. Like they would like, after you after you paid, they would like slide the tip jar over to you and like point in it. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, well, that's they, how tip you. Because they, they said something. So they're like, here it is if you want to or something. It was nice. I was like, oh, yeah, of like, course like, I want to. Yeah, like, it wasn't like in Canada where they turned the iPad around. They're like, <laughs> and you're like, I just ordered. And the lowest option is $20 tip. Yeah. And you're oh, like, you um, know. you got a penny on there? <laughs> it's wild. Uh, it was great. Seth mm. had this one man come up to him and Seth was like, I don't want to tip him. I want to tip the other guy. Oh, no. Yeah. Cause and then, so the <laughs> one that we liked was on the opposite side of the stage. And then I have my bill like this, and I'm like, hey, come over. 
deserve it. Which, and like, then, the guy did kind of deserve it because he was putting in work. Like, like most of them were giving the sexy meals. This guy was, like, speed dancing, gushing sweat. He was doing a little too much yeah, for like me. Yeah, the ugly one. Yeah, but I was like, uh, like, damn, he's putting in the work. Like, a little bit unnecessary. <laughs> it was gushing the sweat. I, I was the kind of impressed. The ugly one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, he was like, because it was like not the cute one that I wanted. The ugly one just comes up and he starts dancing like a lot, like ah. Uh, and then he sees that I have a bill in my hand, and as soon as he sees it, I go like this and crumble it and hide it in my hand because I'm like, it's not for you, honey. I saw you, and <laughs> and then he just grabs it and puts his hand, my hand on his body and goes like, and I'm like, no, no, <laughs> yeah, and so I give it to him, and, and another like, bill Whoa. falls to the floor. Yeah, and then something falls, and he's like. And I'm like, literally what? demanded. Like, pick it up. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, okay. So I pick it up and then I do it again. And I'm like, I turn around. I'm like, it wasn't for him. It was for the other guy. Yep. And then uh, I was like, well, Seb got to like feel one of them. It's my turn. So I got my little 20 pesos. Girl, you had already felt a bunch no. of before that. No, that no, wasn't no. the first time we tipped. No, I, I only tipped the once. So then I was like, it's my turn to feel the fantasy. Here we go. So I grabbed my $20 bill and I was like, gonna just like give it to him. And then he grabs you. He puts your hand all the way down. All the way to the hair. That's all I'm gonna say. Because, you know. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So rude. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, I haven't. It's been a while since I've touched another man besides Seb in such a way. <laughs> like, I was, like, flustered. But I'm pretty sure you tipped more than once, you because I remember one time you were like this. No, know? I would talk. I, I would oh, thanks, bro. That was, what, that was the time. Getting, no, but that was another time. There was, like, two times. Okay, so least. maybe I got into it after that. Yeah. But I was primarily, like, every time I would give a bill, I would give it to you because or, like, to the girls because you guys were like, what out of bills? And I was like, I got one. Yeah, because it's great because the bills here makes you are like tiny, cute. Yeah, you don't feel bad. Sticky. It's great. So they're like, if it's like, play money. Play. <laughs> and then I just turned to the end and I'm like, this is so fun. I love objectifying men. Because it's so fun. Wait, okay, well, you said it feels like play money. So rude. Uh, oh, no, wrong one. Problematic. <laughs> You're like pennies. No, because it's like plastic. It's like Canadian money feels like Monopoly money too, because it's like plastic. Yeah, I get really stressed when those bills rip because you're like, ah. yeah. Just no, I feel like I'm not. No one's going to accept it anymore. Okay, so then later on in the night we go upstairs and they're playing Taylor Swift. They play oh, Taylor Swift like God. twice, and then you have to request it. And as you can see it on my Instagram stories, they cut us off. Yeah, because it got to the Taylor Bridge, which you know everyone who's a Taylor fan is a lover of the bridge. And then they switched it to freaking like peaches, peaches. And I was oh, like yeah. pissed. We were Rattled. Like, what is this? Like what a switch. From yeah. that to peaches. They also dropped major Gloria Trevi. And this is like the day after we saw her live in yeah. concert. So fantasy fulfilled. They were really good. The DJs were really good. Then they clear the stage. And this one walks up with glasses. Oh my God. How, How could I forget? Explain? This <laughs> other one that was like our second favorite. But his tongue. Was yeah. I didn't notice this until the end of the night. You're like... Why the fuck is his tongue doing that? Because he was like, he, he looked at me and he was like fast side I to side. My, oh my God. <laughs> you can see full video podcast episodes from season three, two, and one on our patreon.com slash Sebastian. And then he, so he's dancing with the glasses and it's my last bill. So I turned to my friend and I'm like, I'm not going to give it to him unless he gives us a show. And then as soon as I turn around, there's like a crutch in my face and his sunglasses are covering his dick. And he puts the sunglasses and he on. And grabs you. my face and goes like this. Ah! <laughs> to put the sunglasses on and off, on and off, on and off. And then he put, leaves them on and I'm like, ah! <laughs> and I was like, do I keep them or not? And then I'm like connecting the dots. He came in in glasses. His tongue's moving a lot. Miss Molly was on the stage with him. Oh, you think? Probably. <laughs> oh. But he didn't care because he took the glasses off and gave them to you for like the whole show. Yeah, and then he took them back. Did he take them back or did you hand them back? He took them back. Oh, okay. But... That was iconic. Yeah. <laughs> wow. There was another guy who they had did like give a he show. was rocking like this like, really cute like up twirled stash kind of thing. I'm not. He into wasn't really those like at all. yeah. He wasn't. But but like you have to appreciate the work that goes into it. Yeah, but I'm I'm not into those. <laughs> Problematic. <laughs> I'm not into the mustaches that twirl up. Yeah. No. It's just like I'm not trying to sleep with 
Charles Chaplin or whatever. <laughs> Charlie Chaplin. What's his name? Yeah, Is yeah, that yeah. the one that went like that? Yeah. Like, I, I'm not trying to see that <laughs> while I'm being pounded. Yeah, honestly. Um, but the one thing I have to say is that he ha- he was packing the biggest heat. So rude. Oh, true. He was. It was massive. Because every yeah, it looked well, like in the. I was like, the mustache is not the only thing the curling up. Where it looked huge. And then our friends were like, oh my God, it's huge. And I'm like, yeah, but like the hot one is the other one. And I was like, no, tip the other one. <laughs> well, the other one's kind of like, he also wore like the banana hammock and it was beige. I feel like that makes it look even bigger. Whereas the other ones were all What's wearing a black. Banana hammock? Like, like, like. It was black underwear. No, he had like a, like a flesh tone moment the going on. The see-through one? Yeah. It was black. No, 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 no. The one with the giant dick. Oh, he had like a flesh tone yeah, moment going yeah. on, so you could kind of like see everything. Yeah. And then the other guys were like, all it was like black, and it kind of like, it kind of like suffocated. Yeah. I was like, let her breathe a little bit. Oh my god! And then one time, remember that was the third time he touched someone. Because the guy was coming out of the stage. The our favorite one was coming down the stage, and his oh my god, his underwear was like half like <laughs> and that. We all started and he his starts butt. like he starts go moving his butt in front of us. And then we're like, ah, poking the butt. We're like, yes. And he's like, duh, 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 duh. <laughs> I forgot about that. Oh my God. <laughs> it was like, I highly recommend. I've been to just so many flop clubs in the last few years. Yeah. It was so nice to have the club really like, go off. The energy and the whole room was amazing. They and also, also for, we forgot to mention in between these go go dancers, they would bring drag queens on the stage, which was, was so cool. Oh, yeah, but we missed the show. But one of the drag queens was rocking coquette. She had a pink bow here. Oh, pink bows yeah. On her outfit. And we're like, so coquette. <laughs> and they're like, I just learned that word today. And we're like, yeah. <laughs> and then we're posing with the drag queens and our friend's taking a photo. But she's pretending to take a photo. She's really on Instagram the whole time. No, she was. Her what phone was, she was updating or something. I was like, girl, we're like, take the photo. And then we took a selfie and the queen was like, Oh my God, this is criminal because the lighting. Like, uh, you got to do flash with the drag queen. Yeah. So we were like, yeah, sorry, queen, sorry. Then this queen upstairs was twirling and swirling her hair, and I was so excited. It was the end of the night, and I had a $200 peso moment. I was like feeling fancy. I was like, I'm going to support the queer community today. Going to give it to her. Me and two other people are standing there just waiting to give her this bill, and she's just not taking the bills while she's dancing. I'm like, girl, do your job. And then Seb comes up and goes, you have to just give it to her. And I'm like, I'm trying. She's not taking our bills. End of the song comes. Seb's like, you just have to give it to her. She walks off the stage. Me and two other people left hanging with our tips. And we're like, I was pissed. I was livid. I was like, you were like, how I think, dare she? I think it's part of her performance. She leaves it to the last second. Because she wasn't I'm taking like, anyone's I don't money. Think so, <laughs> you were sending me. You're like, just give it to her. I'm like, I'm trying. And then when she walks away, I was sincerely offended. And I just thought to myself, Kefi Fi. <laughs> like how sometimes she was feeling her pretentious gay fantasy. The economy. I guess she didn't need it. She's like, save it for the strippers. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, they need it more. <laughs> uh, I just remember seeing them dance and it turns me on. Like, wow, that's such a fun job just dancing. And I was like, um, maybe not when you do it every day. <laughs> yeah, it must get tiring. <laughs> uh, but it was so fun. We recommend it. We highly do. Problematic. So as you can see, we have our new button. Uh, <laughs> we're going to be adding more sounds yeah, to it. We did a bright revelation that we can literally just record um, voice memos and that works perfect. Yeah. Because we soundboard. were like, how are we going to do this? <laughs> how do we make a soundboard? But then we can make them actual buttons and sell them in our merch store. Oh my God. Who wants a problematic button? Problematic. <laughs> um, but I was going to say. Oh, oh my God. And at the end of the night, I almost forgot. I had the best motherfucking. It was my last. Oh, well, I did have a sausage in my mouth. You did. A big a one. Big what was sausage. on it? Chips or something? Oh, it was delicious. So we went out and there was like a was hot like, dog stand. Like ketchup chips? It was a large hot dog. And then it was, I think it was Doritos. Oh, well, it looked real nice. Yeah, there's nothing I love more than street meat. <laughs> and then and then I'm like not into the street meat fantasy. I was like, um, I'm going to go find a quesadilla. And it was my last night having cheese because I don't want to have cheese anymore. And I was like, wow, I could not have found a better place. Yeah. These chicken cheese quesadillas were the best fucking shit I've had in my life. It was so good. Oh, we have to go back. Because Seb told me for years while I was vegan, like, oh my God, you're missing out on like true Mexican cuisine. Like you need to try the cheese here. And now yeah. I understand. Because there's the so Oaxaca good. cheese, it could smack me right in the face. I know. That one's so good. Like literally, that's my street mate. Because <laughs> it's really 
comforting. Because it's like, it doesn't taste like pizza. Pizza, That's pizza. like, if you eat it after the club, it's like very heavy on like... Yeah, other the, things like quesadillas uh-huh. are just like the natural cheese in the tortilla. And they made it with this, I don't know what kind of chicken that was, but oof. Yeah, it felt wholesome. And they really came through because it was two quesadillas per order, and they gave me three per order. See, that's why I think I got scammed, because I said I want three quesadillas, and they just gave me three. Oh, that's not a scam? Not three orders. Huh? No, it's like each order had two quesadillas in it. I got two orders, but one of my orders had three instead of two. Oh. It was great. So I was like, oh, wow. So I got one order. Yeah, you got one order. Oh. Okay. Uh, you were wanting more. Yeah. Well, I had Queen Cloud with me, and she was translating. I was like, thank you. Then we had this emotional talk, and she was like, I think you're really much better at Spanish than you think, and you just have to be more confident in yourself. And I was like, oh, thank you. Aw, so cute. So cute. Queen Cloud. It was so fun. We'll have to redo the night. We should. I would um, I would go back just for the quesadillas. <laughs> oh yeah, I think it's for the gay something, and then I was like, "Oh, quesadillas." Mocha rolled in some sort of <laughs> outside grossness today, and he smells peculiar. And he just After got a bath. hair uh, bath and a haircut. Yeah, Mocha, show off your show off your look. If you guys can see in the video, which you can see a portion of on my YouTube channel and the full on patreoncom Sebastian, Mocha is glowing because he got like a whole grooming experience yesterday. Mocha, what? Did, Oh, no, I think he's farting because something is going Ew. on. Something is ghastly. <laughs> oh, <laughs> mocha. Jesus. Um, but then also... What did you eat, we boy? We went to a concert. <gasps> Gloria Trevi! We went to Gloria Trevi live. It was so... It was like her era's tour. It was so amazing. When she... <laughs> she came out singing, Gloria! I told you she was going to sing it. Because that's not her song. No, I know, but she made it, in, like, she made a cover because of this, her name is Gloria. I, I get it, and it was like, wow. Gloria. It's like a, it's Gloria. an English song. Like I, like, I wasn't expecting a single song in there to be something I was, like, extremely familiar with, and I was like, shut the fuck up. Then she played literally, uh, basically her whole discography. Yeah. Like, like, it was the Eras tour for Gloria. It was amazing. It truly was. Like, she did, like, from her old days... Then like she didn't she hadn't sung our favorite favorite one and we were like and then the show was over and then everyone's like encore encore Medusa Gloria and Medusa. we're like it better be Medusa and it was Medusa which is a song about Medusa the origins of Medusa and how it released her life it's so good Medusa Pelo Suelto y una otra it was what was the other one. Mm. I can't remember. But wow, like who comes back with an encore and does three more songs? That was amazing. I know. She came out to the stage. So we were actually supposed to be like a little bit, like seven, probably like nine rows further back than we were. And then Seb's aunt, do you say aunt or aunt? Well, My aunt. Aunt. Seb's aunt. How do you say it? Aunt? I like aunt. Like growing up, I would say aunt, but I feel like aunt sounds better. Because if I say aunt, I'm thinking about. Like an aunt. <laughs> I'm like, aunt was here? Aunt was there? <laughs> so Seb's iconic aunt graciously was like, oh, well, I'll go with your mom and dad, and you guys can have our two tickets. So we ended up being right up, like below her. She was on top of us. Yeah. She came out. I was dying. It was magical. Oh. I was like, wow. She also looks like Shania Twain a little bit. So like halfway through the concert, I started thinking, oh, I was watching Shania Twain. And you're like, wow, she knows Spanish. Yeah, it was, <laughs> it was tripping me out. Uh, but it was also the same day. The concert was the same day that we had a misfortune of events. Oh my happen. God. I was so happy. The concert really did put me back in a, a space I needed to be in because Spotify decided to delete my entire discography. Yeah, we were getting ready. We were, we were filming some TikToks, some cat TikToks. Go check them out. <laughs> and then someone... Oh my God, who is the man that the man. posted it? Oh, Don Alberto. Don Alberto. <laughs> Don Alberto came through. Guys. But... Yeah, we're just chilling, and then Dion sees a, twi- a tweet that says, "My favorite Dion Yorkie song is out on Spotify." And we're like, <laughs> "My heart what? sank." I'm like, "Cause immediately it was like for a better bitch." <laughs> it was like immediately throwing me back to when my YouTube channel got demonetized. I was like, "I have that gut feeling that this is about to be a, a clowning moment for me." <laughs> so then I open my Spotify, and all my songs besides "Bitter" because it's like the new one. Um, I guess that one they didn't take down because it had like only like 3,000 streams or whatever. But um, yeah, so th- it, everything just 
just gone. All the songs were gone. I log into my music distributor, which is DistroKid at this point, and I'm going to be changing that. Don't use and, it. Yeah, don't use DistroKid. Um, I've been using them for four years, no complaints, and then all of a sudden they are becoming a bit of a scum. Um, allegedly, I don't know if it's DistroKid or Spotify. Apparently both are cracking down on fake streams. But my songs are real streams. The problem is that if a bot playlist adds you to their their playlist, you have no control over that. And like sometimes you can't even figure out how to contact them to get you out of it. So now Spotify is penalizing the independent artists for being in bot playlists, even though we have no way of controlling when a playlist is real or not. Because I think also... And, and then instead of coming for and taking down the bot playlist, which is what Spotify should do, they just decided to delete my entire discography and say 100% of my streams were fake, which is literally impossible. Like, I obviously have real fans who have been streaming my music for four years. It, it was a very overwhelming time. I think we've all streamed your songs. <laughs> it was very overwhelming. No, because it's also, I feel like, the bot playlists... Like, they go for independent artists, they add them to their playlist so you can see it, and then you message them, like... Exactly. And then they're like, oh, we can offer you 50,000 streams for for $4. And then artists who don't know that these are fake streams do it. Yeah. Which, like, I know they're fake streams because I've had warnings from my account before saying that I've had, like, a small percentage of fake streams, and that's when I figured out, like, about these bot playlists and how it all works on Spotify. So, yeah, I don't do that. But for them to claim 100% of all my streams yeah. for my entire discography. Because it was also like wild. songs that, like Heartbreak Kid. That has like 40k streams. Yeah, like, like that's all, all of it. It's handy. Yeah, that's literally. <laughs> like all the songs, it's so stupid. The OG yeah, album. EP. And then also, oh, I was going to say something. It was crazy because it's just like Spotify... They don't owe you as an independent artist any explanation because they technically are just connected to your music distributor. So they send to your distributor that they think these streams are fake, which I can't believe Spotify would say 100% of my streams are fake. It just seems so like Spotify, like why would they do that when that's not true? And then DistroKid says, oh no, it's not, it's not our fault. Spotify claimed this, so we have to delete your songs or we're going to get fined, which is also fucking bullshit because like, like girl, find me the $10 per song. Like just leave my shit up there. Like, and at the also, end of the day, like, if you're going to falsely accuse me of something and then take away all my shit, it seems just so illegal. And also, it's like, look at all the other artists. Like, I'm sorry. Like, I just saw, what's his name? The Weeknd has 115 billion streams or something like that. 400 like, billion. No. Um, uh, but um, like, blinding Lights. He just got, wait one second. Let me eat. But yeah, like, I'm in the industry. I've, I've talked to people in the industry, and it's very, like, obvious that major artists buy streams. Like, we all know about Piana. We all know like that the these weekend. streams are inflated. So if why are they taking down my streams, which aren't inflated or fake, 100% fake or anything like that, but then not penalizing, like, Ari or The Weeknd or whatever? Like, The Weeknd so just became the first artist to surpa- surpass 115 million monthly listeners. In Spotify history, which is like, because I heard from the grapevines, allegedly, it's all bullshit. That, like, from someone connected to the industry, I heard that The Weeknd had already gotten in trouble for buying fake streams. Yes, allegedly, I heard. And now he has 115, which is like, yeah, his songs are good, but like, what is he releasing lately that is like making everyone stream? And it's like, why are they not going after these big ones? Mm hmm. Is and it's the like the independent they, ones that are not even making ten dollars a month from songs. And by ish. showing these streams publicly and having them be inflated and bots and everything, it inflates the industry and makes makes everything like disproportionate. Yeah. Because then you see an independent artist and then it puts in the art it puts in the um it puts in like the viewers, the listeners' mind, like, oh my god, like what a flop. Like they only have like a thousand streams. When really a thousand streams for an independent artist is so so good. Like it's hard yeah. to get. Like a lot of artists can't even break that threshold. So for these artists to have these 150 million monthly listeners, like there's no fucking way. Because also now they're making it even more like independent artists or like small artists won't get paid for their songs unless they reach a certain trash hole yeah, of streams. Yeah, I just saw it. It's which is like, so Bullshit. how are they going to get those streams, bitch? Yeah. Like literally, like if you don't have a thousand streams on Spotify in a year, Spotify will delete your page, your songs. Like, that is so fucking... Really? Fuck. And then also it's like... It's very... Problematic. And also it's like how, like how Ariana Grande right now, she did like 15 versions of Yes And. 
mm-hmm. to be number one on Billboard. And it's like, it's just created this whole culture. It's not even about like what people are listening to anymore. It's about how many people have, can stream as many times as they can, like different yeah. versions and everything. Like it truly has inflated and just like twisted the industry in this way that's so unauthentic. And like that's why Apple Music is kind of cool because they don't show the stream count. Yeah. Which I'm is an how Apple it Music kind of girly and I always have been. And, and Spotify is the power. Like what they should do is clean out all the streams, like not delete artists' fucking songs, clean out all the fake streams, clean out all the bot playlists even from the large artists, and then everyone will have a re- accurate representation of real numbers, and those real numbers can go to the charts. And yeah. then people will, will start to like actually understand what real numbers are, instead of these numbers that are just so unattainable. Because it makes no sense we messaged this true kid, and they were like, well, we recommend just keeping an eye out on the playlist that you get added, and just if you see any bot playlist, delete your songs from there. And it's like, how am I supposed to track all the playlists that I get added to and then realize which ones are real playlists? Because, like, how do you know it's which a, ones are real playlists? That would be a full-time job. One? And, like, like, girl, you have to go to school study that shit? Like, what? Yeah, it's like, how do you know which one is a fake one? You don't. Like, sometimes I'll have days where I get, like, way more streams than other days. And it's so exciting for me as an artist. And then I... I but look, now it's scary. Now you have yeah. to be like, wait, yeah. no! And, and then I look at the playlists, and Spotify doesn't even update the playlists until days later. And also, so how the fuck are you going to know what playlist you're being streamed on that one, and take it down in time? It's ridiculous. There was a month when Sus and another song got added to a Spotify editorial playlist mm-hmm. I had, that was ambient sounds. Yes, it was so weird. And it's like, it was so what weird. about those streams? Like That was from Spotify's team. And they, It's a verified Spotify playlist. And I think that's why I got flagged for artificial streams. It was a real editorial playlist. And it was weird because I got added to that playlist and I was getting all these streams. And then I, when I went to the playlist, my song wasn't there and on Sus, the playlist, Sus but I was still getting the streams. Yeah, and Saz didn't go with the vibes of that playlist. No, it was like a so sleep music playlist. So somebody fucked up and they were like, let's get Sus in there. Let's get Sus while we're sleeping. Which, like, great for us, we got the them. streams. But then it's also like, if they're going to penalize you, like, the artist should not be penalized for the platform's issues exactly if the system is fucked own up to the fact that your system needs fixing don't just fucking fuck over all the independent artists yeah and it just proves how much spotify literally gives no fuck about anyone but the top one percent of artists who have like you know are lining their pockets and because yeah what's the yeah what difference if you get rid of all the independent artists and your and your what's it called in your platform, Spotify, then who is going to get you the real stream? <laughs> no, but like, but it's really, sad because like, they, like, they just see independent they so artists. Focus on the small artists when they're like, the big ones that are doing this are like. Because they, they don't see independent artists as valid. They treat independent artists as another customer and another consumer. So in, in doing the takedown of your stuff, you often have to pay again for these plat- these digital streaming um, distribution companies that Spotify has investments into. So they're just funneling, funneling money. Oh. It's so sneaky, allegedly. And also alleg- allegedly, like, I can back you up on that allegedly, that The weekend literally has been busted buying streams. Yeah, we've allegedly. heard it, like, for plenty sources, allegedly, before. And it's not just him. Like, the like Drake has literally admitted to it as well, I think, allegedly. That in the past, he would do it because it's, like, it's the only way to compete. And it's like they have a bunch of money and they're like, okay, let me inflate my numbers, which is obvious because who the fuck is streaming Drake? I mean, yeah, people are, but it just would be nice <laughs> if the numbers were authentic because then everyone can just like stop with this bullshittery. Yeah. That would be great. And it would be a lot, a lot less problematic. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. But yeah, so I got myself back on Spotify thanks to Seb who is a genius problem solver, figured out how I could do that. My streams are back, thank goodness. And now I'm working on finding a better music distributor, publisher, blah, blah, blah. And um, yeah, it's just a lesson to never give up and work hard to, if you're a creative person to protect your art because no one else is going to give a fuck about your art. Like no you one do. else, no one else can feel the rain on your skin. Um, anything else you want to say before I start the Wheel of Wheels? Uh, let's start the Wheel of Wheels. Okay. So, if you don't know, last week we revealed the first song, um, the first track title from my debut upcoming album, which will be coming in the coming months. So now we're going to reveal number two. Number two. Say something while I get this out. 
Uh, 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 we're going to reveal number two of the upcoming album, Better. That could be yours soon. Make sure y'all go stream. And also, we have been posting filters on our TikTok with our songs. So make sure you go use them and use the songs. We have one for With Friends Like These, one for Sus, one for Bitter, and there's one for the other ones coming soon. So there is some duds in here. Yeah, the filter thing <coughs> has been really fun. And Seb is super inspirational. I like, always coming up with new fun things. So I'm obsessed. Um, and let's just acknowledge your talent of figuring that out. Thank you. So some of these are duds. If a dud one comes out, we won't get a song release moment today. Okay. Who knows? <laughs> oh, what is it? It is. Nine one seven eight six. Nine <gasps> one seven. We have a winner. Six. The title of 91786 is Watch It Grow. Oh, Watch It Grow. Watch It Grow. Oh, so rude. Wig, honey, what are we going to watch grow? Wig, yes. I was writing Watch It Grow, and then after the song had been complete, I was like making the, what are they called? Acronyms? Acronyms. The acronyms of the songs, and I realized it's Wig. Watch wig. it grow. Did you say wig? Did you? I did say wig. So, yes, now we have two. Oh. If you want to see what song title track we announced last week, go check out the podcast episode previous to this one. Like I always say, you can check out full podcast episodes from season one, two, and three on patreon.com. Please give us five stars wherever you listen to podcasts. And shout out to the demonetized bestie. We love you over on Patreon. We're going to be glamorizing and extravaganzaizing the badges over on patreon this month so shout out to the rainbow clown bestie here you are on the screen and all your shiny gleaming and to the sebastian collectors love you Manny. hey thanks for hanging out with us we'll see you next episode love you all bye, bye.